Golden Gate Park is a giant wreck area smack dab in the middle of San Francisco. It's an awesome resource, but there's so much to do it can get overwhelming. In this four part series, we're going to do a highlights reel on the best of the Golden Gate Park. San Francisco's Golden Gate Park was created in the late 1800s when urban parks were all the rage, like Central Park in New York City, the Boston Commons in Boston, and Grant Park in Chicago. Golden Gate Park is the largest of all of these at over a thousand acres, about 20% larger than Central Park. But hey, there's no East-West Coast rivalry going on here. The over three miles of park grounds are packed with lawns, gardens, sports facilities, lakes, museums, a music concourse, a children's playground with an old-timey carousel, a bison paddock, and a beach. Cause, well, it's California. You could literally come year-round and experience something new each time you come. As we head into summer, staying cool is the main objective. Even though San Francisco's weather is temperate all year round, there are still some hot, hot dog days. So today we'll focus on some of the breezier attractions that harken back to the good old genteel Victorian days of summer. To get here, Muni will take you to the edges of the park, or you can drive. There's small parking lots and plenty of street parking. Although if you do drive, take all your valuables with you as this is a high smash and grab crime area. Cars are banned on the weekends, but they do run an intra-park shuttle. Smack in the middle of Golden Gate Park is the ever popular Stowe Lake. This man-made lake has been a favorite locals hangout for many generations of SF families and is a cool place to come to pass a pleasant summer's morning. There are a serious number of turtles everywhere. There's a one mile walking loop around the lake, which will take about 20 minutes to complete. And you get some gorgeous scenery of the wildlife, the landscape, gorgeous, gorgeous flowers, but it's pretty crowded. So instead, the more scenic way to get oriented is to rent a pedal boat or a rowboat. At the northern end of the lake is the Stowe Lake Boathouse, and you can take your pick of a paddle boat, a rowboat, or a motorboat. Rentals last about 45 minutes, and it will take you just a little under that to make a circuit around the lake. In the center of the lake is Strawberry Hill, so named for the strawberries that used to grow on it. From the boat, you can spot some super cool man-made features on the island. Herons and aigrettes are indigenous to the Bay Area, and there's a small flock of great blue herons nesting right here on this island, right across from Huntington Falls. If you come April through June, you can catch the small hatchlings and during April and May, naturalists will set up telescopes at an observation area on the weekends, so you can check out the hatchlings up close and personal. I spy a heron in there. Can you see it? serious wind doing some uh, heavy pedaling here just to get up river. That was a lot of fun. You could cross over to Strawberry Hill to get a closer look via one of two bridges. This one, the Roman Bridge, which is in the northern section, or the more charming and rustic stone bridge on the southern portion. Okay, quick scavenger hunt. Can you find all those man-made features you spotted from the boat? 
This Chinese pagoda called the Golden Gate Pavilion was a gift from San Francisco's sister city, Taipei, Taiwan. It's not only symbolic of the friendship between the two cities, but also commemorates the early Chinese settlers who were a huge part of the development of San Francisco. Yep, this is an actual waterfall in the middle of Golden Gate Park. It was installed when Stowe Lake and Strawberry Hill went in in the late 1800s. And mechanics behind it are quite ingenious. Strawberry Hill actually houses a water reservoir up top, which feeds Stowe Lake. It flows down from this waterfall into Stowe Lake and then is pumped into other irrigation systems and lakes throughout the park. Strawberry Hill is about 430 feet in elevation. And when you get to the top, there's a spectacular 360 degree view. There's the Golden Gate Bridge and the marina over there in the distance. Downtown through the trees there. Twin Peaks with sunset below it. And Richmond all the way out to Ocean Beach. I'm gonna grab a quick snack here at the Boathouse Cafe before heading on over to the Conservatory of Flowers. This cafe just recently changed ownership and the new management has done a stellar job in crafting a menu that features mainly local producers. SF residents have a long-standing tradition of getting two items here, one of which I am so bombed is sold out today. The Stowe Lake Pink Candy Popcorn, which sells immediately as soon as they get it in stock here, and the It's It Ice Cream Sandwich. The popcorn harkens back to the 1940s when Wright's Package Popcorn was made right here in Dogpatch. And the It's It, another local specialty, has been around since the 30s and gets shipped up here from the production facility in Burlingame. It's a scoop of vanilla or mint-flavored ice cream sandwiched in between two old-fashioned oatmeal cookies and covered outside with delectable chocolate. Mmm, that's delectable. It's good old-fashioned yumminess wrapped up in a chocolatey package. The mint ice cream is so smooth and creamy and cool, and the oatmeal cookie is nice and cakey. But you gotta eat it fast before all the ice cream melts. In the afternoon, you can duck out of the sun in the Conservatory of Flowers, located at the northeastern corner of the park. There's a small admission fee of six bucks for residents and nine bucks for non-resident adults. The history behind this greenhouse is so cool. It was originally commissioned by James Lick, a real estate mogul, for his San Jose estate. It was prefabricated off-site, boxed, and shipped to the Bay Area, but Lick died before they could even uncrate it. A group of 27 businessmen, including Leland Stanford, the founder of Stanford University, pulled together the funds to purchase it from the estate, and then they donated it to the city. It was opened as a conservatory of flowers in 1879. This is the oldest Victorian greenhouse in the world. In the Victorian era, most grand estates had a conservatory where they would store exotic plants brought back from Asia and other far-reaching continents. Often, ladies and gentlemen would take afternoon tea in their conservatory so they could enjoy their exotic gardens. And in that spirit, imagine yourself munching on some cucumber sandwiches as you stroll through the galleries. There are a couple of galleries that are a must-see. The Highland Tropics Wing houses an incredible collection of orchids. This area has some gorgeous and unique water lily ponds. There's also quite the collection of carnivorous pitcher plants here out to catch the unsuspecting bug. The main attraction of this conservatory is this unique plant back here called the Titan Arum, also informally known as the corpse flower for its god almighty awful corpse rotting stink. What does it smell this way? Well, 
This plant relies on beetles to pollinate it, which are attracted to rotting organisms. The plant typically blooms in the summer and the flower is huge. Last year, its peak height was 56 inches. When you're done inside, don't forget to tour the unofficial outside gallery, the Dahlia Garden. We end our perfect day at Ocean Beach, which end caps Golden Gate Park to the west. This gorgeous beach stretches three and a half miles from Fort Funston to the south, all the way up to Cliff House in the north. But like most beaches in San Francisco, this ain't a swimming beach. The rip currents are deadly, even for toe dipping. On top of that, Carl the Fog rolls in in the mornings and doesn't burn off sometimes until the late afternoon or evening. So it's not such a great hanging beach. But there's an awesome esplanade where you can take in some air and do some strolling. From the esplanade, you can catch surfers riding the last of the day's waves, silhouetted by the oranges and pinks of the setting sun. And the bundled up beachgoers by the fire pits, picnicking, partying, and roasting marshmallows. And don't forget to bring a jacket because it gets pretty chilly out here. Thanks for spending this wonderfully nostalgic day with me out here in Golden Gate Park. Have an awesome evening, and until the next time, peace out.